We lost quite the individual this past week. A very unique spirit, a a dynamic force. Some people would use four-letter words to describe him. Some would use flowery prose. But no matter what, you kept it real because it was New Jack. He was not a man to be trifled with. He was not a man that you took it easy on. He was not a man that you tried to get cute with either. His opponents varied from very well-seasoned journeymen to kids trying to make a name for themselves in the business. He, he was both the gatekeeper and the main event. He was a guy that definitely was not just overseen. He wasn't someone that you just glanced at and that was it. His scarred forehead is legendary. And he wasn't one that, you know, had to be the victor all the time. He, he went down, but if you were in a New Jack match, you knew you were in a New Jack match. This man was one of the far more inventive hardcore enthusiasts of the day. Because of him, I actually feared mop buckets. Not mops. No, he was pretty he was pretty nasty with the broom handle. I'm talking the actual squeezing apparatus to to take out the dirty water or the overly saturated mop itself. Yes, he actually used the squeezing apparatus on, if I recall, it was C.W. Anderson. It might have been his tag partner, but either way, he was the first guy I ever saw use a staple gun in a wrestling match. You know, he actually made a ukulele a feared weapon in the ring, and even played a quick song before smashing it over someone's head. He beat you with crutches so badly that you needed other crutches to spend the rest of your days. He was brutal in the ring, but he had to be because that's who he was. New Jack was a force of nature like none other. There are those that try to compare him to Abdul the Butcher. There are those that try to compare him to Bruiser Brody. There are those that try to compare him. And why would you even try that? He was not just another black wrestler. He was not just another hardcore wrestler. He wasn't just another extreme wrestler. This this man was something else altogether. And he has left, well, he's left a scar that won't heal immediately. And if there's one thing I learned growing up from the likes of New Jack and his compatriots is that scar tissue doesn't always look cool, but it always leaves a hell of a story, and I know several members of the wrestling community that have plenty of stories to tell about New Jack, and for someone that allegedly was beyond difficult to associate with, there are other stories of a guy that had your back. If you if you put the time in, he was there. And he was down to work with you time and time and again. But man, he he had a hell of a hill to climb himself. He actually at a very different time in the wrestling community used affirmative action as a means of being a heel. He once cut a promo commending 
OJ Simpson for, well, something he allegedly did. He was very controversial. He was very opinionated. He was beyond dangerous on Twitter and social media for sure, but that was New Jack. He never pulled his punches, friend or foe. He he was just as inventive with his words as he was with his weapons. He has admitted, you know, he had admitted on several occasions to, we'll, we'll just say his match with Vic Grimes, we'll leave it at that. He truly was a force of nature, a man that made his impact. And it had to be more than appropriate for a man like New Jack to have a signature move he called the 187. He proudly called this maneuver the 187. Not because it sounded cool, but because it was his intention. A flying chair shot from the top rope, usually to a prone opponent. These poor bastards weren't standing when this happened, no. They were on their back, already staring at the lights, expecting maybe an elbow drop, maybe a top rope leg drop. They weren't expecting a man to come down on them with a steel chair right across the dome. But he did it. Because that was New Jack. And he will not be forgotten anytime soon. The internet exists and it has cataloged many, many encounters of his. It is something to behold, ladies and gentlemen. It will always be something to behold. Because he is New Jack. He is not to be trifled with. And if he's greeted at the gates of Valhalla, I would assume it would be with open arms. For he was a warrior to the very end. That is clearly proven time and time again. He came from a different generation, different world, it seemed, compared to how the business is done today. There's a reason why people feared him on network television. His words alone were just as dangerous as anything he picked up. And that was a lot. He certainly had a lot of different choices when it came to what he was going to pop you with. And if all else failed, he would find the tallest thing in the arena, make his way up there with great fervor and use his own body as the weapon that finished you off. It was the embodiment of car crash in the greatest way possible. I wonder what my fascination with New Jack is. 
Am I just jumping on a bandwagon? No. I watched him. I observed him. I studied this guy. Was he the only one? Of course not. But I paid attention, especially when he walked in the room. Why? Because he was New Jack. And I'll shout not fuck with New Jack. One of the most gangsta there ever was, ever is, or ever will be. He might not have picked that name. That might have been a predestined chapter in the history of wrestling. Like, maybe we always needed a new Jack. And he became the new Jack that we needed, that we deserved. You can't blame him for that. Can't blame him at all. And I do wish I'd gotten a moment. Whether it was to buy him a beer and thank him for his. Let, let, let's face it, it's not just contribution to the business. They all sacrifice themselves. His forehead alone shows you that he was willing to. Stories he's told, you can find plenty of them on YouTube, as well as probably a few other places. Stories he's told are beyond memorable. And we start this hard-hitting show off with a triple threat weapons match. We have Reaver, Bao Zhang, and Alexei Monstro in the ring. These three heavy hitters are not letting up at all. Anything they can get their hands on, they are using. And with some Russian interference, Alexei picks it up. Now we have a first blood match between Sweet Jane and Kezia. Now, I haven't seen a lady spill blood in this ring in quite some time, but with some sweet dreams, sweet Jane, <laughs> she's got it done. Now we have our first of two tag matches involving furniture as the Scuzz Buckets take on Brick City. Who is going through the wood? Who is going through the pine? Who is going through the table? And with the wrong side of the tracks, Brick City gets it done folks now we have the vips against the reviver militia this is a chaotic encounter enough as is but with added furniture with tables involved who knows what's going to happen as these two teams are vying for some level of control some semblance of dominance and with a thrill kill the reviver militia get it done well, what are these two doing out here? Oh. Oh, my. And what's he going to say about that? Oh. Oh, I can't wait to see what these guys do. And now a battle of the sexes as Sheba takes on Morbid in the middle of the ring. Who's going to get the victory here? Back and forth they go. Body sacrifice. And with the whole... Oh, oh my. Sheba got it there. What is going on here? Is this an alliance?
And the main event, ladies and gentlemen, a last man standing match between Matt Caliber and Domingo. Who is going to come out on top? Who is going to literally be the last man standing? And the heavy gunner gets it done, folks. There we have it for somewhat of a tribute to quite the individual, but don't forget, I've got another tribute match from another time and another place. And if you can, try to find some of this guy's matches. Look up New Jack. He's quite the study. Believe me, folks. He was necessary for all of this. I don't regret ever studying him. I don't regret ever following him. And I'm sure there are plenty of people that don't regret ever crossing his path. I wish I'd gotten to be one of them. But that's what next lives are for, right? Anyway, let's get on to the next match. Ladies and gentlemen, these two former friends going at it in this main event. Back and forth they go. What is going to happen? And with some violent tendencies, Ronnie Boliva picks up the win. And folks, you too can be a winner by checking out each and every one of these wrestling events happening all throughout the next oncoming months. And don't forget, Things are picking up. Things are going to be there for us. Wrestling is back. Better than ever. I can tell you that wholeheartedly. I have faith in the product I always have, and it is just getting there step by step, inch by inch, centimeter by centimeter. It is coming back full force, and with what we know and what we're able to do, you know wrestling's going to be even better than it has ever been in the next few months, in the next few years. I'm telling you, it is going to get back to a golden age like none we ever thought we would experience in our lifetime. So please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notifier to stay up to date on everything that's going on. And if you know of a show that I need to keep an eye out for, please leave it in the comments below. I'm not kidding, folks. I want to see more of this as much as you want to see and experience more of this. But until next time, I'm Ian Torch. This is Lunas Macho Monday, and that's it. It's over. Ring the bell.